and welcome to the Googleplex. This is an incredible place with lots of great stuff being worked on every single day. Before I worked here, I always wondered what it would be like to come to the Googleplex, meet up with a Googler, and have coffee with them, and just chat about what they do, how they do it, and why they do it. And today we're going to do exactly that. Welcome to this episode of Coffee with a Googler. Today I have a very special guest joining me. Emeka has come all the way from Nigeria. Now Emeka, he's a program manager in Sub-Saharan Africa, responsible for working with developers in that part of the world. Now he's also been working on this awesome project, which has been about taking developer content that's typically only available online and making it available to developers offline. So Emeka, welcome and thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, Lawrence. Oh, you're very welcome. It's, a, it's just a real treat to have you here today. Yeah, it's a great day on the <laughs> campus and it's great to be here. So, so tell us about this project. Is it uh, Kesa? Is that how I pronounce it? Project Kesa. Okay. Yeah. So Kesa is uh, it's an Igbo word. Uh, it's a language spoken in southeastern Nigeria. Kesa means to distribute or to share something that it gets to everybody. Okay. Everyone. Yeah. The project was actually born out of um, the work we're doing in Sub-Saharan Africa, working with the developer ecosystem there. And while doing this, we found out that yes, Google does have a lot of great developer content. But this content is mostly online. Okay. And by developer content, I mean stuff like the tutorials, the videos, documentation, right. uh, installation files, and, and stuff like that. This content is mostly available online. Right. But then you find out that in Sub-Saharan Africa, a lot of the people have internet that is either too expensive or unreliable, or in some cases, non-existent, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so these developers um, find it pretty hard to get access to this content. So we asked ourselves, is there a way that we can get this content to them in a way that is uh, offline friendly, so okay. to speak. So we tested our idea first with a small pilot that where we just had about 500 DVDs. Okay. And we got some of this content you know, on the DVDs and uh, we ran a pilot with a few developers. And the response was amazing. Nice. Yeah, they loved it. So we decided to take it a step further. And uh, we actually got a lot of content, about 32 gig of content, what we call the, the software developer um, offline kit. Okay. And uh, it's, nice and uh, compact. Yeah, very compact. There's a, this one is a USB format. Okay. It has 32 gig of, of data. Sweet. And on it, we had stuff like we had the entire Android developer website here. We had the Google Cloud documentation. We had uh, all the software developer kits for Android and Cloud here. We had um, documentation on material design. Okay. We had videos for Cloud and Android from Google I.O. and uh, the Google Developers Channel. And also, very importantly, we had um, the Udacity course videos. So like the Android fundamentals, exactly. the scalable, all yeah, that stuff. All oh, that cool. good stuff. And um, we invited people to, uh, who are interested in joining us in this pilot to apply to get one of these kits. Okay. You know, and we were actually blown away by the number of applications we got. We got about 4,000 wow. people. You know, this response came from all over the world. In fact, one of them I found particularly interesting was this guy who uh, he walks on a boat on the North Sea for two weeks, on and he, he is on land for another two weeks. Oh, wow. And while he's on the boat, I think he, he writes code, so he didn't have access to all this content, you know, because internet was a challenge on the boat. So he requested that we send him the kit so that he could use it while, while writing code <laughs> do, on the boat. Do you know what he was building? I have no idea what he was building. I would love to find out myself. Well, if you're watching on this, uh, please just leave us a comment uh, below so you can tell us what it was that you built, because we'd love to know what you did while you're on the boat in the middle of the North Sea. So you've had folks from all over the world downloading yeah. it. What, what kind of results did you get? What kind of numbers did you have? We do know at this point that at least 4,000 people are actively using the content in okay. over 100 countries. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so that's quite interesting. And that's the ones that you know? That's the ones we know because right. obviously this content is used mostly offline. So okay. we, we don't know anything about you know what goes on offline. But right. when they use it well connected to a computer, we can tell through Google Analytics you know, that it's been used. And we are going on to, to actually spread this even more. Cool, yeah. cool. And like this content, it's like twice a year you do it, so you produce new content? Yes, we try regularly. to do it twi twice a year. Um, so in fact, there is another one due in the next a few weeks. 
Nice. Oh, yeah. I look forward to it. So yeah. hopefully some of my content will be in there. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely will be in there. <laughs> now, now, your target developers originally, even mm -hmm. though you reach global, but your yeah. original target developers were sub-Saharan, Nigerian, yeah. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little bit about developers in that part of the world? What What's the profile of a developer there like? Uh, the profile of a developer in sub-Saharan Africa is one that has been evolving over the past okay. um, few years. So in the last six years or so, um, the ecosystem in Sub-Saharan Africa has come to realize the value of the internet, um, not just as a channel for reaching their customers or end users, but also as a growth engine for empowering themselves economically and financially and so right. on. Because of this explosion in the last few years, many of these startups who have built uh, products that are actually gaining traction find themselves in a situation where they need to get new talent or okay. you, you know they need to expand their team right. and the supply the, the demand actually way outstrips the, the supply okay. you know so that's actually what keeps me awake at night <laughs> uh, trying to figure out ways to grow the talent pool upskill more developers for these startups to hire and continue doing what they're doing. And then these startups are great contributors to the economy as they yes, go forward, Yes, right? yes, a so lot of them are doing very great things. For example, e-commerce uh, recently took off. In Nigeria, there's a company called Conga, for example. Okay. I think they started in the last year and a half, two years ago. And uh, they recently launched their Android app last year right in time for the holiday shopping season. Nice. And it was a really big hit for them because it helped a lot of people who are mainly on their mobile phones to uh, place orders and you know, have these orders fulfilled. Folks that aren't aware of it, like in sub-Saharan Africa, the desktop revolution kind of passed by, right? Yeah. People have really gone straight to mobile. So e-commerce yeah. is mobile first. Yes. It's mobile only rather than mobile well, first. Well, yes, so like, exactly. You know, or primarily. So yeah. as a result, then somebody like that can be really yeah. successful yes. for the economy as a yes, whole. Yes, indeed. Cool. Now, I understand one of the things you've also been working on is design and design language and helping mm -hmm. mobile developers to design in a user-centric way. Is, mm -hmm. what, what efforts have you been putting forward in that? Yes, uh, so with the internet, the evolution of the internet as a channel and a, as a growth engine, uh, one challenge that has come up in Sub-Saharan Africa and indeed many major market countries is the lack of locally relevant content. Okay. You know, there isn't enough of this locally relevant content right. online. And for the internet to be useful to people in these regions, they have to find something that is useful to them that sure. was built for them. For them, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So a lot of the content online right now was built here in Silicon Valley or in Europe or yep. wherever yep. and wasn't built for you know the user in Sub-Saharan Africa. So what we're trying to get the ecosystem to do now is to do what Google does, right? Okay. To focus on the user. Right. Know, in this case, the African user, to build for that user um, by integrating principles of user-centered design okay. in their uh, product development process. So what we did was uh, starting last year, we started running a, uh, a series of UX masterclasses, as we call them. Nice. Um, the whole idea was to introduce these uh, principles of UX design to developers, product managers, project managers, and so on. Right. So that they can apply this to the tools and the products that they are building. And we just had the second iteration of that uh, okay. this year, where we focused on teams that had new product ideas and mm -hmm. teams that had existing products that were trying to iterate, you know, to get the next version out. Got it. And uh, the result has been quite encouraging. Now, I understand recently in your country there was an election and technology played a great big part and mm -hmm. Android and App Engine and other mm -hmm. stuff played a part in that. Yeah. Could, could you tell us a little about it? Yes, um, the 2015 elections in Nigeria were uh, quite unique for a lot of reasons, and one of them was the role that technology and uh, social right. you know, played in the, in the entire process. But before the polls themselves, there was this concern that there would be some form of voter apathy, that people wouldn't come out to vote. And you so, can't have democracy without voters, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, right. you just can't. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one of the things we did was to run a campaign okay. called the Pledge to Vote campaign, where uh, people went to a website that was powered by Google Cloud and the pledge to vote. So when you did that, you get a badge generated nice. you know, for you with your name, and you can automatically share this on uh, the social platform of your choice and challenge right. your friends to also go and pledge to vote. So that was quite um, successful. We also had uh, various uh, Google Plus Hangouts, okay. uh, where a number of the candidates you know, actually engaged people, the press, 
the public on you know their manifesto and, and, and stuff nice. like that. So it was quite interesting uh, the role that technology played and um, I think cool. uh, the country was better off for it. That's good to hear. So, and I know there was a great blog post on Google Africa. Yeah. We'll post a link to it here. And so one of the things like with elections is like elections are quite close to being universal. Mm -hmm. and, but we can learn a lot from what you guys did in Nigeria, hopefully for our elections next year. Emeka visited us all the way from Nigeria and he shared these amazing stories of just the breadth of things that developers are doing, all because of content that you're able to give them offline. So thank you so much, Emeka. Thank you again, everybody. If you have any questions for me, just leave them in the comments below. And if you have any questions for Emeka, please also leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to the Google Developers channel for more great episodes of Coffee with the Googler. Thank you.